Hi guys, uh, today I bring you Tibia EK Guide Part 3, Mana Management. And this is by far the most requested video I've ever had. I have probably had about 20 or 30 people request a Mana Management video from me over the years. And today uh, I bring it to you. Um, but the reason I haven't brought it to you so far and why I've been quite hesitant to record it is because I think people have the wrong expectations. I think people who re watch me uh, play and they watch my videos and they see me having, you know, near 100% mana at all at most spawns all the time, um, they think, you know, there is some trick or tip, you know, this, this one simple trick, you know, all other EKs hate him, um, some trick that I can just give you in a mana management video and you, you will watch it and you will go off and your mana management will increase by 30%. And the answer unfortunately isn't so simple. Uh, there really isn't some magic trick that will make you, uh, you know, an amazing mana management EK. Um, so before we get into the video, I guess bear that in mind. Um, but I think there are things to improve quite easily that will make you better at mana management. And with a little bit of experience uh, using some of the things that I will mention in the video, you should get better. But you should just bear in mind that there isn't some magic trick that I know that other people don't know that makes you better at mana management. Uh, before we dive deeper into this video, I just wanted to mention that I already have EK Guide Part 1 and 2, which concerns a hotkey setup and different charms that I suggest getting on an EK. So if you'd like to check those out, the links will be in the description down below. So let's take a look at the actual ways of gaining mana in Tibia so we can talk about how to improve them. First of all, a quick list. Uh, in number one, we have passive regeneration, so the mana you gain from food. Uh, number two, we will talk about leeching, so your imbuements, your powerful void, your powerful vampirism. And basically leeching is gained from using attack spells and from using the melee auto attack. And lastly, we will talk a little bit about potions. Uh, and this is both health potions and mana potions, uh, because by using health potions, you effectively have to use fewer mana potions. So it's also related. So... First of all, just a real quick note on uh, the first item, which is uh, passive mana regeneration. Uh, for those of you who are curious in the maths, uh, a knight gains 20 mana per minute from passive regeneration when he's eaten food. Um, on, the, on the other hand, knights should use about 52 to 55 strong mana potions per minute if they're playing effectively, which is a total of 8,250 mana on average. Uh, which means that just simply by using food, you can increase your mana regeneration for, for, uh, by 0.24% of your total mana gain. Um, whether that's worth it or not is for you to decide. I know loads of people don't eat food because they think it's too much micromanagement. Personally, I use food. I mean, it's 0.24% gains for basically no effort for me. I have brown mushrooms on hotkeys, so it's not a problem. Uh, you know, if someone uh, told you that, you know, your investments or whatever can just go up by 0.24% by just doing one simple thing, you would do it, right? So this is kind of similar, I guess. You can just get this benefit for basically no effort. So I, I would do it, but obviously it's not going to make a massive difference. Let's not, you know, let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> so moving on, on just the slightly more important section or potentially even the most important one. Uh, is leeching and leeching when it was implemented had been an absolutely massive game changer for knights because it allowed them to sustain their mana so much better so there are two ways uh, to sustain uh, leech first of all is through attack spells so basically your rotation your xori gran xori xori min xori mass etc damaging spells um, and i'm not really going to talk too much about this particular section because Basically, what it comes down to is just making sure to use your attack spells every two seconds. And every EK should be doing that and should know that they have to get the rotation out as often and as effectively as possible. Now, the second thing is the auto attack. So this is your melee auto attack that you do every two seconds, not the spell. And I think this is a really important point because I think this is where a lot of uh, leeching gets lost. So just as an example, the way formulas for leeching works, um, the fewer attacks an attack does. So, so for example, 
And auto attack is just one attack, right? Exori min is three attacks or hits three monsters. Exori grunt hits eight monsters, etc. The way the formula for Legion works, the fewer uh, monsters that are attacked, the higher the percentage value of the leech returned. So even though, you know, an auto attack attacks one monster, which, you know, doesn't seem like that much damage, the leeching is very significant, very, very significant. Just as an example here, your auto attack hit him for 800 damage, which is, um, you know, on a mid-level EK, pretty average. I would expect that this is maybe around the average um, hit that you will do, um, you know, when you have crits as well. And each hit like this will leech the same amount as using Exori Gran on eight monsters for 450 damage, okay? So this is how the formula works out. Now, if you're missing your auto attack, you're basically missing out on the leech of like an Exori Gran for 500 damage every turn. Um, it's very significant. Um, I, you know, I try to crunch the numbers a little bit. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, uh, but my estimation is that auto attack makes up for about 30 percent of your total leech so you, your spells overall will still i think uh leech for a little bit more um but your auto attack is very 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 important okay if you're giving up on 30 percent of your leech uh that is a lot because leech is almost pretty much leech gives you as much mana as potions as well so you're basically giving up a lot of mana if you're not using your auto attacks uh so you have to be really really careful uh, not to miss your auto attack and you know you don't you shouldn't miss your auto attack uh, by not spamming your mana potion so this is something we'll talk about in the next section but if you just hold down your mana button for example um, or you know or your um, health potion button you will likely skip a lot of your auto attacks so you need to time your potion so that you do not skip your auto attacks because if you're skipping your auto attacks you're basically already way way behind on mana management Another one, uh, and this is something that I see so many EKs doing, and this is this is the probably a number one tip in general I have for EKs who don't do this. Um, you need to be always, always attacking. You know, when you're at a hunt, you should be always attacking. The reason why it's so important for EKs is because of the leeching, how much leeching is important for you. So when you're you know pulling monsters and you run into the box and you you know you've got your one sqm where you love for doing the box and you always kill them there you need to be attacking the monsters as you're kiting them to that box you know i i have seen so many eks just running to the box and standing there for three seconds as all the monsters surround them and they do nothing and then they have mana problems okay it's crazy like it's i cannot stress enough how important it is to do as much damage as possible while on your way to the box. This has two benefits. One, as I already mentioned, it uh, increases your leeching by a lot because you're basically doing the damage, you know, all the time. Second of all, it actually lowers the health of the monsters, right? They get to the box and most of the monsters are like 80, 85% health, which means your box lasts less time. So you don't have as many problems with mana. So if you're struggling with mana, maybe maybe this is your problem, right? You need to make sure to be dealing as much damage while kiting the monsters towards your box. Super important. Anyway, moving on to the next section, and this is where we're going to talk a little bit about potions. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about using health potions. Uh, because this is something uh, slightly controversial, I, I see as well. Uh, so what I'm going to say is that each of the main three potions, uh, I have them listed here. So the Great Health Potion uh, heals an average of 500 HP per turn, the Ultimate one 750, and the Supreme Health Potions an, uh, an average of 1000 HP per turn. So if we do a little random mathematics here, so assuming you need to heal 6000 health, uh, using potions per minute. I think this is, um, I don't know, this this might not necessarily be true for every spawn, but I think this is a pretty reasonable assumption. Uh, this is the equivalent of using six supreme potions per minute, um, or about 360 supreme potions per hour, which, which I think is somewhere in the vicinity of how many I use if I hunt a relatively difficult spot. <clears throat> but anyway, the idea is the same even if, you know, you have higher number of health potions per minute or lower whatever the, the idea is the same so <clears throat> in my example of using of healing 6000 health potions uh, health points per minute using potions you would need to use 12 great health potions 
or eight ultimate health potions or six supreme health potions. Now, as you all probably know, uh, using a health potion disables your mana potion for that turn. You cannot, you cannot use both at the same time. So if you use supreme health potions instead of great health potions, this means you have an extra six turns uh, to use your strong mana potions, right? Because you're using six fewer health potions, so you can use six additional mana potions. And this is as much as 900 mana per minute because from those six extra uh, potions. Now, this, these numbers will vary, and obviously this, this depends heavily uh, on the spot. So my conclusion here is that if you are struggling with mana at a given spot, you should be using the strongest health potions available if you use them at that spot. If you're, you're hunting some really easy spot, right, and you're not struggling with mana, by all means, uh, be economical and use your great health potions, use your ultimate health potions to uh, keep up with your health. However, if it's a difficult spot uh, and, you know, you're constantly sort of fighting for your health and your mana, just, just use your Supremes because it makes it so much easier because you can then get more mana potions and your experience will also increase as well. And, you know, even the profit, because your experience increases, profit is a function of your experience because you're killing more monsters, so your profit will increase. If you're struggling with mana at a given spot, always use the strongest available health potions to you. That is my conclusion, and I will stand by that. Now, moving on to the section about actual mana potions. So this is the section where I think people expect the, you know, the highest amount, the highest amount of tips. Um, but ultimately, there isn't that much that you can do here other than basically the summary is you need to get better at using mana potion every turn. And that, that is the summary. But anyway, let's take a look. I've, I've prepared some bullet points anyway. So first of all, uh, I suggest setting up a convenient hotkey. Uh, what this means will be different for different people depending on the keyboards, depending on the setup. So I'm not going to give, you know, an ultimate answer here. This will depend on you. But basically, you need to have a really convenient hotkey for mana where you can just keep pressing it, you know, and it doesn't, it's not difficult for your hand. It's not, it doesn't make you cramp your wrists or whatever. Uh, some people I know like to use on spacebar, so you can just have it easily with your thumb on the spacebar. Uh, some people have it on the mouse scroll. Hell, I've I've even heard of people on my Discord talk that they have like a, like a pedal under the desk, you know, for like a driving game, and they use that for a mana potion. So plenty of solutions, plenty of solutions. Whatever works for you, just set up a convenient hockey for your mana. Uh, you know, don't have it on like an F8, you know, like a random button somewhere where you can't access it easily, and it's between other buttons. Just Make it this thing, make it super easy. Um, my example, I have a mana potion right next to my Exura potion, next to my Exura spell, rather. Um, so I'm just able to just go rhythmically on both of them. Uh, and that's how it, it's easy for me. Now, it takes a lot of effort and practice. You know, I've been playing this game for 20 years. Uh, my my uh, rhythm and instincts on the buttons is super easy, uh, super natural, but it does take time. Okay, it, it, there's no two ways about it. Uh, and on that note, I do suggest you practice. Uh, so uh, this this might seem, you know, wasteful, um, but I do recommend practicing where you can, you know, calculate how well you're doing. Um, I give an example of a modified Gnarl Hound. Uh, this depends, you know, uh, a lot of, on some servers, a lot of people uh, train there. So don't be an asshole, you know, don't go there and kill the Gnarl Hounds if people are uh, training there. But it's just an example. You can do it on other places. You can do it even on, like, if you have high level, then you can do it on, like, an Inquisition boss, for example. Uh, lots of different uh, um, ideas. To be honest, you can even do it um, just without any monsters, right, On in the city, uh, as long as you can record it and then find out how well you've done, you can just do it even without any monsters. But anyway, the point is you should practice doing the full rotation and using mana potions uh, and actually using uh, your Exura as well. So in full rotation, I mean the attack spells and your Exura. Uh, and you should set a 60 second time and check how many potions you manage to drink while doing the rotation and the Exura. Now, you're not going to be leeching here if you're not going to be hitting any monsters, so you might run out of mana quicker. But I guess the, the point is to see how many mana potions you can drink in 60 seconds, okay? In my opinion, a good goal to have is to be able to use at least 55 strong mana potions in a 60 second window. 
while also trying to, you know, do your rotation and Exura. Like I say, if there's no monsters around and you're not leeching, you won't be able to do this for 60 seconds. Uh, and then maybe you just want to try just the mana without the rotation, just to make sure that your manas are hitting 55 per minute. Um, because that, that is what you should be aiming for. I mean, 50 as an absolute minimum, but about 55 is probably what you should be aiming to, to be like a top level UK. Uh, and moving on, yeah, this, this tip I mentioned earlier is you should never hold down the strong mana potion button or hotkey, whatever you have, as that will interrupt your autos. Now, not always, it doesn't always interrupt your autos. I don't, I don't really know fully how how it works underneath the hood. I think there's like some sort of grace period. I, I don't really know. Uh, what I do is I spam the SMP uh, hotkey button somewhere around every 200 to 250 milliseconds. So I do it, you know, at about this pace, about four times a second, I think. Uh, and this generally means I don't tend to miss my, uh, I don't tend to miss my uh, auto attacks. And as we already mentioned, uh, auto attacks Super important for leeching, so you definitely don't want to be use, missing your auto attacks. Um, and to be perfectly honest, uh, this is more or less everything I have for you. So on this last slide, I have a too long didn't watch uh, summary, uh, and it's ranked. So I've decided to rank these six uh, tips in order of importance, in my opinion. Okay, so let's just recap really quickly uh, first of all practicing doing full attack rotation and uh, exura and mana potions while aiming for 55 strong mana potions per minute and being be able to effectively do this this will have by far the highest uh impact on your mana management i'm not you know I'm, i don't necessarily mean that the practice itself is gonna like be this amazing thing but being able to do this while you're hunting is what's important like once you're able to do 55 manas per minute you're going to be really, really good at the game, okay? And the best way to do this is either just play for 20 years, you know, and just naturally learn to do it, or force practice, okay? Just go on the street, uh, you know, high street, get yourself with 2,000 strong mana potions, get your timer going, and just just try, try and do it. And you will learn it, okay? Uh, second tip, already tried to stress it earlier, is to always attack monsters on your way to the box. Uh, Super important. It's really, really this important. Uh, third point is uh, never missing the auto attacks. I think the auto attacks, again, like I mentioned, are responsible for about 30% of your leech, which is about probably somewhere around 10 to 15% of your overall mana gain, including potions. So that's really, really a lot. So definitely don't miss your auto attacks. Uh, number four, setting up a convenient hotkey. Really important. Uh, number five, the health potions tip is also uh, important, but near the bottom of this list and number six uh, using food to get that passive mana regeneration in uh obviously that's really you know it's it's a bit of a joke almost in a way but it, it's something right like i mentioned it's about 0.24 percent improvement so hey why not why not use it um and yeah i i guess this is all i have for you um like i mentioned this was a really requested video um maybe you will find it useful i to me it feels like most of these things are obvious but maybe this is because i've been playing the game so long maybe for some of you this will not be so obvious and this will be helpful i really hope so um but i don't think there's anything you know groundbreaking here i don't think anyone will walk away from this video mind blown because the reality is there isn't anything mind blowing about man and management it is literally just practicing and making sure you're hitting the things that you should be hitting. Um, easier said than done, of course. Uh, you know, this is not easy, but it is just practice. OK, so everyone can do it. Uh, you know, I, I definitely um, I definitely think everyone can do this. Um, I guess maybe as a one final comment, I will mention is that leech uh, obviously can be increased by higher character skills and levels. So as you get higher level or as you get characters with higher skills, you will deal more damage, you will leech a bit more, your mana management does become easier, okay? So having a higher skilled character does make mana management easier. However, it will not make up for not playing well, okay? So if you think you will buy a character with 130 skill and suddenly you're gonna be amazing at mana management, no. You still need to be doing all of these things, okay? It will make it just a few percent easier, but you still need to be doing all of these things, okay? 
Okay, so that's what I have for you today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you to all of my YouTube members for supporting the channel. I will uh, just give them a quick shout out on the next slide. And yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.